Hey everyone, John here. This time we're going to attempt some third generation AirPods. If you're a full access member on my Patreon, you can grab the work file and work along. You can see I've already put the guides in here for us to save us some time. We've got a front orthographic and we've got a left side and we've got a right side. Now we don't have a top, but I do have a pair of AirPods in my hand, so we can definitely use those as reference. And if you have them, definitely grab those as well. So let's go to left orthographic. Just a couple of housekeeping things here. I'm using Blender 4.1. I've still got the beta installed. I should put the full version on. And I've got no add-ons turned on other than the, can't see it here because I'm on edit mode, other than loop tools. So I may or may not install some add-ons as I'm working through this because um, when I installed 4.1, I didn't include my previous theme. So we're keeping it pretty vanilla. I'll try and keep it as vanilla as possible and uh, we'll see how we go. So that being said, let's get started. So we're in left orthographic. What we'll do, just make sure in your add-ons that you have the extra 3D objects add-on turned on. Just go up to preferences and under add-ons. Type in extra, you can see I've got extra objects, okay? I said 3D objects, but it's just extra objects. So just turn that on. And what we'll do is we will press Shift A and we'll choose mesh and we'll choose round cube. Now mine's already set up because I've done this earlier. So you need a radius of 0.1. And when, why is it so small? That's because we're working in millimeters. Have a look at that in a moment. And we only want a, a divisions of two. So that's all we want, okay? And what the reason we've got it so small is because we're working in millimeters, okay? So we're actually working at scale. All right. Just hide that. Okay, so Alt Z to go into X ray mode. We'll just drag this up into position. We could have started with a cube and subdivided it, but it made more sense to start with something that's closer to the actual shape. Okay, so we will hit R and we'll rotate that about there. And just getting it into position there. We want the right view, so that will go, I guess, somewhere around there like that. So I'm holding middle mouse button and just alt snapping. I like to navigate through my different views that way. All right, so this is the base, base, base shape, right? So the reason we're doing it such low poly is because we're going to be pushing verts around and getting this into shape. And if we have any more than the lowest possible poly count, uh, it's, going to be, it's going to be super difficult to not introduce lumps and bumps. So we want to keep it really low poly until the next stage when we start adding in details. So what we'll do is we'll go into point mode and actually first thing we'll do is we'll add a modifier because we want to see this subdivided. We want to work with it subdivided like that, right? That way when we stretch it into shape, we'll be able to get the, the, you know, the proper dimensions. So we'll keep this on two just to smooth that out. Now we definitely have to be in X-ray mode. So I'm pressing Alt Z because if I'm not and I select that, I'm not selecting the other side, okay? All right, so let's start dragging this into position. So we'll just drag my keys and we'll just push and pull, okay? Well, mostly pull, we won't do any pushing. Just getting this into shape. Once again, we've got really you know, low poly object, a really low poly object, so it's fairly flexible. And it should keep things really smooth. Not sure how long this is going to take to model. I've modeled it to a certain stage. I've got um, the base shape. Then I thought, well, I may as well just record it as I go. So I stopped and I've, um, I'm just starting from the beginning again. 
usually what I'll do is I'll model something and then I'll work out all the steps and I'll uh, do it step by step. And that's okay for certain things, but some things it's just a little easier for me to do a little more freestyle. And this is one of those objects. Okay, so if we go around the back, you see that's, I've got these images pretty well lined up, so that actually is pretty good. That's good. We're not thinking about any of these details at the moment. We just want to get this this uh, shape sorted out. And it's actually a little tr fairly tricky shape. So let's go. That's pretty good. All right, so let's go to the front. Let's see. Uh, let's just grab that. And it needs to be fairly distorted in this view. We're going to have to extrude this out as well. I wonder whether we should grab the whole thing and you know rotate it. A bit, bit more like that. And we just keep stretching it into position. It's a little difficult to see the outer edges. Let me just do that just for a moment. It's a little easier now. You can see we're getting, I've only got a few verts selected, but we're moving a large part of the object because it's, uh, it's so low poly. And that's exactly what we want. That allows to keep things really smooth. We don't want to distort it too much. We just want to do big sweeping movements. I guess you could use sculpting to do this as well. I don't, I prefer to do it this way rather than using a brush, but that's up to you. So that's starting to look okay. We'll have to look at it from the top as well. Okay. Turn the display back on. You can see the difference when it's um uh when we turn off the cage. <laughs> There's no way you'd be able to work it out if you weren't uh in a subdivision surface modifier. Okay. I might do is just shade smooth, get rid of that faceting. Taking a bit of time with this. Obviously, you're watching the video, so if you've already got yours into shape, you can always fast forward. Okay. We'll look at it from the top afterwards i'm not going to change the top shape just yet until i've um until i've extruded out this section here let's save see this uh opening here is not right in the center here it's more over to the front or to the side so it would probably be put in this area here so that'll probably be a good area to put that but we won't be able to put that in until we've subdivided this so I think we're okay. I wish we had a top view. It would be much easier to get that shape if we had a top view, but that's okay. Let's just grab these. Bring those around a bit like that. All right, so next, 
we will shift D to duplicate. Let's turn that one off. Mine says nine because I've already created a few of these. And we'll hide that one and we'll keep backing up, okay? So we can always come back. So what we'll do now is take these and let's inset, okay? See where we're going with this? And we're gonna drag this out like that. And we might want to just rotate that. See, we've got, you know, to sort that out there, but we won't know until we extrude again. We'll extrude and we'll just bring that down like that, okay? And rotate. So now we've got that in there. We're going to pull that back up and bring that down. We have to do again, extrude. <laughs> it looks like some kind of marrow, doesn't it? But it's starting to do what we want. What we'll do here is obviously this is going to be a cylindrical shape. So we'll go up to our loop tools. Make sure you've got loop tools add on turned on. And we will do a circle like that. We turn it off for a sec, so we've got that circle, okay. Might just scale it on the Z to zero like that, okay. It's obviously way too fat. So that would have to be scaled right back in like that. Which means that this one would have to be scale Z zero, and then scale that in two. turn the subdivision back on you can see that's going to have to have a loop in there and we don't want to put too many in let's actually get rid of these bottom ones because they're just and we'll just delete faces there we go so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on without those and bring these across Scale. I want to be in vert mode here. I'm just going to bring that up to there. Scale. And that's all going to have to come across over to there. All of this is going to have to come across. But it's all cool because we've got, you know, super low poly. And we're just manipulating this into shape. So these can come across and these can come up now. Right up there like that. But because we didn't bring this one up, whoops. Let me just bring that back. I'm going to grab that one as well. Bring that up. And we'll have to manipulate some of these when we're not uh, in x ray mode in a moment. I kind of like doing this kind of thing, just working under subdivision and getting the shape sorted out. I'm only going to add extra loops when I absolutely need them. Anytime I add an extra loop, I add more faces and more chances that we're not going to end up with a smooth result. We're doing okay. If 
you were doing this for a client, you know, <laughs> obviously if the client was Apple, it's even more important. What I might do is just get rid of those two and slightly larger, slightly further across and bring that down. Just delete them and just take this one again and just bring this down. Then I know that they're lined up. Don't be afraid to, you know, delete things. So that's much better. All right, so we're definitely getting there. Now we just got to push a few verts around here and there just to get this matching the guide image just a little bit better. You can see it's a little curved here. It needs to be pushed in a little bit there. Same over here, pulled across. And uh, I'm going to have to get my AirPods out of their case and have a look at the top as well because that's, that's not, not quite right there. So let's just continue. And let's see here. That's a bit squished in there. Bring that out. That gets that a little straighter. It's gotta be it's gotta be really straight along here. Do what we can in wireframe mode and then we'll go out of wireframe mode and have a look at this. So it feels like it needs to be sort of pulled up a bit. Probably got to grab all of this, I'd say, and you know, bring that across like that. Here we go. I'm just going to line this one up here. Now bring this one down. Ah, that's more like it, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's imperative that we get this shape right at this low poly stage because once we subdivide it, then we're, we're basically, you know, we're locked in. Although we, you know, we will be able to shrink wrap onto the uh, original one, the actual subdivided version that we're working with. Uh, we really won't be able to do these these larger move, you know, these larger uh, adjustments, these more global adjustments. We've got to get this right now. It's coming. It's getting there. You can see this is looking a little bit weird now. See, it's all pushed in. So that has to be pulled out. Yeah, it's pretty easy to make these kind of adjustments, like I keep saying, at this low poly mode. I'm just trying to do it in wireframe mode at the moment, using the wireframe as my guide. Nice and even looking. I mean, it's definitely getting there, isn't it? Yeah, so in order to bring that one across, I'm going to see if I can do it with this amount of subdivision. Maybe we can do that. And then bring this one down. No. It doesn't quite have enough there. If we go and put a if we go and put a loop in there, that'll give us more. We can bring that across, see like that, but it's starting to it means we've got to sort of spread things out around here. We can try that. And bring that gives us that little bit of extra geometry to work with. Being very careful, you know, to make sure that I've got both sides selected. That's why I'm working in wireframe here. 
Yeah, bring that down. Definitely has improved that. Wonder if we can just spread those out a little bit. This is the first time I've actually modeled this shape, so we're doing this together. Be a little careful not to change the circular shape there. Can probably get away with pushing that one in a little bit. We'll see in a moment. Slide that one up a bit. We've lost a little bit of the shape there. Um, that's probably from me just trying to line those sides up. I'm just going to bring that back. It's a good idea to keep checking and double checking. It doesn't have to be perfect, but um, you can get this as perfect as uh, as you want. So it's not looking too bad, is it, actually? What I'm going to be looking for now is um, you know, obvious sort of dips and bumps. But that's been pulled across there like that. Is that, could that be just, you know, slid a little bit, just to sort of loosen it up a little bit? It's not looking too bad at all. That one, is that one dipping in a little bit? Maybe. How does that, there, can that come across? Come on to the back. Come across just a little bit. Could we bring this one across a bit? So really just, you know, really fine tuning. Just making sure you've got that shape looking just right. I mean, if this doesn't look, I want a hundred percent like the AirPod that I have in my hand here. It's it's okay, but it's more about you know the approach. I want to get it as close as possible. Okay, so I'm going to what I'm going to do now is just save that version just by pressing shift D I'm going to turn this one off and we're going to come to the top this is where things need to be adjusted a little bit I'm just going to grab mine again and all I can see from mine is that let's see this is this is pretty good I think overall it's not bad it's a it seems to be a little bulbous here, but we're going to have to check the side view because the view that we modeled it to, the, or the front um, reference image, it seemed to match pretty well. So that's not too bad, but this here is sticking out too much. This needs to come in a little bit more. And it looks kind of twisted too, doesn't it? So, so this here seems kind of twisted. I'm going to bring this across. Let's get that a little straighter. Which means this is probably going to have to come up. And this is what we want. Because I actually want to bring these, these in. Like this. So that's, that's looking a little more realistic. And this one now too as well. That's got to come in too. Oops, I've taken 
those two in. I want to take this one in like that. That's looking a little better. That's looking a lot more like what I have in my hand. And this is looking a little straighter now too, isn't it? It's going to probably come across a bit. across it's not looking too bad actually it's got a little when I look at it from from the top it, the one I have in my hand this just dips in here and this curves around like that so I think that's pretty good maybe this can come in a little bit too Imagine if we had a higher subdivision, this would be impossible to do this. Okay. Still seems just slightly off over this side. Bring this around a bit. It could be pretty well good to go. What I might do is just come in and um, turn these little arrows back on so I can select these and just come back and turn off the perspective view. So that's off as well. So this gives us a little bit of a better chance to look around it without those guides being in the way. We save that. Yeah. A little bit of sliding around. Looking for any sort of dips in the topology. Make sure the transition from this perfect cylinder through to here is is looking nice. Feel for, feel free to you know, skip forward in the chat if you um if you've already done it. I am editing a little bit of this out here and there. I've got that little dip in there. We bring that. It still feels a little bit sort of pointy here. I'm just going to smooth that out a bit, but I also want to just grab this loop and maybe just slide this down a bit, just GG. Like that. And go to vert mode. I think it's probably just got to come back a bit down like that, maybe. And maybe these ones have to come out a bit just to round it out a bit. We're not too much though.
and we are going on guide images that aren't official guide images as well so let's just in edge mode just just to select these ones and what we'll do is we'll move that all across there and what I'm going to do is grab this one and just straighten that up like that and this one can come down like that hasn't made a bump there has it or a or a little dent in it seems to be okay it's so much more forgiving when you've got these huge polygons huge faces so looking at the actual image of the third gen airpod you can see there's a seam running around here and you can see it here and we have to take that into account when we lay down this initial topology so if you have a look here it actually the seam runs actually pretty straight up and down it doesn't run at an angle like that so what we have to do is account for that with the initial topology so i'm thinking about it i've been thinking about it. i took a short break and i came back which is always good when you're working on something like this and I think we have to rotate this one around pull this one across pull this one up to try and account for that seam so I wish it was actually on this in this image but it's not so what I'll do is yeah okay I don't really want to do that um, let's see we might do this by pulling some verts around so it's going to take a little bit of adjustment. So, you know, bring that across. Bring this across. I want to get it reasonably straight. So it's going to sort of mean there's adjustments required over here. And we want to get this quite straight. This might have to come back down like that. And this comes down really important that we make uh, compensations in the topology for this seam because it's going to save us a lot of hassle later if we were retoppoing then we would retoppo with that seam in mind but we're not actually retoppoing this we're using the uh, the topology that we're creating so this will have to come up and it's actually quite good because see how that's kind of stretched across so this can come up and just sort of loosens all of this stuff up opens it up a little bit I think we're getting closer now see what the importance of having good guide images is as well this is the one that's probably going to be and when we subdivide we'll have a extra you know an, an extra seam down there and that's probably what we're going to use I think it needs to be a li even a little bit straighter want to get that top bit sorted out a bit it's 
So this here will be the um, the opening where the sound comes out. So I guess speaker, um, and the split runs down there. So I think we'll be it runs straight down there. So I think we'll be okay. That looks, that's looking a little bit like it needs to come in there a bit. That. That's pretty straight now. That's pretty good. I don't think I need to bring these back up. Maybe I do just need to bring these back up a little bit. a little bit bent. We're going to look at this without the subdivision in a sec. Which we'll do right now. Have a look at how this, see it looks a little crazy. I'm just going to make a few adjustments now. And see if we can get that right up a little better on the cage. Just check the cage and see if there's anything crazy there. So that's really pulled across there, isn't it? But I think that's way it has to be. Let's bring that one back across there. And this one is really dipped in there. Let's just turn this back on again. Seem to be okay there. I'm just going to bring that up and across a bit and just try and adjust this so we can see the subdivision underneath. And this is um really just adjusting the tension. I'm going to get the tension a little more even. Not that we're going to be putting any sort of, you know, textures on this. It'll have, a, it'll have a nice shiny white material on it. Make sure we're in X-ray mode. I think that's looking pretty good. back on. Got that much straighter now. When we, when we could select it like this and then just scale on the X, scale X zero. Of course, how straight it is depends on the surrounding geometry and how that's stretching it. It's pulling around a little bit here. That's okay. All right, we are much straighter now. Okay, I'm just going to select that. Looks pretty good from the top there. And Shift D. 
turn that one off. We can always come back to it. So I think now we're ready to subdivide and maybe put this hole in here and start thinking about where the other insets are going to go, you know, getting those in place. We can probably you know, close it off, close it off at the very end. We don't have to really close the bottom there just yet. But overall, that shape is pretty good, I think. Now, before we do go ahead and subdivide this, first thing to do is duplicate, Shift D. And we'll Shift D again. So this one will be 004 target. And we'll just hide the 004 and the target. And this one actually can be 005. So this will be our working. And for our subdivision surface, now we are going to go back to one and one because we only want to lock in as much detail as we need so we'll lock in that by clicking apply now we may have lost a little bit of surface area see if we drop this into a subdivision surface again see we're actually losing a little bit of that but that's okay because we're shrink wrapping back onto the original and we're going to get that volume back okay so that's pretty good so let's once again duplicate, just safety first, shift D, and we'll turn that one off. And let's think about putting the hole in here. So we've modeled it pretty well so far, and we've got these in a pretty good place, and I think we need to grab these ones here. But if you have third generation AirPods and you have a look at them, it's a fairly ovular shape. And this is a little a little rectangular, isn't it? So we're going to need to sort of slide these in a little bit. We are going to be able to put it under shrink wrap in a minute. So we're not going to have to worry about adding any lumps and bumps. But why don't we start by it's just, just using the slide tool and just kind of getting this a little more rounded. I'll just turn that both off. See, that took that quite far. And if we take that there. These have to kind of come out a little bit. Sliding them along. But this one's got to stay inside, sorry. It's got to be in. And this one's got to come out a bit. That. We're still fairly low poly, so we're... We're okay. You see, it is adding some some problems there with the surface, but that's why we're going to use a shrink wrap modifier. Okay. I think that's not bad. It's probably about the right shape. Okay. Bring these back a bit. Just want to get a Pretty even sort of oval shape. Like that. Let's just bring this in a bit more. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. Probably just bring this out a little bit, maybe just a smidge. All right, so you can see it's a little pretty stretched there, but that's okay. What we'll do is we'll go and we will inset that like that. Let's just have a look in here. So we've still got a little bit of room to play with. Let's just do that again. Inset that and just bring that there. You know, is it a little more around towards the front? I don't know, I think that's pretty good. I wonder if we need to push it out a little more that way, maybe. Go shift plus on the keypad. 
Uh, I don't really want to shifting this around too much, but uh, we are going to put it under a sub D surf, uh, under a shrink wrap. I think we'll be okay. Okay. We'll just we won't delete it just yet. Let's just save that. Let's add a shrink wrap. The deform shrink wrap. And down to one. And our target will be the shrink wrap target. See? It gives us our shape back, which is great. It's it is under subdivision. Moment. I just undo that again. Just bring that in once more like that. I want to do it from here, inset, in like that. Okay. So if we, let's see, if we go mesh, separate, selection, it's taken that off now, see, but we've kept it because we can probably use that for the inside bit. Just leave that turned off. That's that's a pretty good shape. I think that's actually not bad at all. Obviously here we're seeing the inside, so the extruded bit of it. So I think actually we've actually nailed that pretty well. You can see the importance of it being under the shrink wrap because otherwise it loses its shape. Okay, so I'm just quickly jumping out here because I got to the end of the model and made a not not a not a bad mistake, but um, something that would definitely, if I was working for a client, would have to be fixed. And that's this hole here. The workflow that I used had this fairly curved, and when I split off the speaker and put it inside, it wasn't even all the way around. It wasn't sitting in evenly, and that's because this hole actually has to be flat and the only way to do that is to literally sort of slice it off with a boolean or the, the best way to do that so I'm just modifying the target object for you to use so you can work ahead or work along with this target if you prefer you can always just keep following along the way I was showing you it's no huge problem at the end but I just wanted to do this because I, I looked at the airpod surprisingly at the very very end and realized that it's literally sheared off um, completely straight so let me just quickly show you how I would prepare the target object and that would be by grabbing a bool boolean modifier and then just pulling the plane into the object like that and switching that to fast like that and then applying the boolean object. One thing just to keep in mind is I have actually um, made this very high res like a, a subdivision level of four and then just applied that and so just select that and then just apply that and just get rid of this and there we go so that's that's now the new target object okay so the hole is in a pretty good position and it's completely flat so when we split off this speaker the grill for the speaker and slide it back in it will be even all the way around and I can't believe I didn't notice that at first but when I hold it up looking at from the top this is actually flat like that so this would be your new target you can have a look in this collection here I've called it new target and you can use that as a target or you can just continue to use the original target that I used if you decided to use this target, what you're going to have to do 
is we were at number six. I think it was six. You're going to have to you know, snap this over to this new target. Okay. And then just integrate this new target into the workflow. So I'll leave that for you, that new target object. And if you prefer, just go ahead and use that. And the, the, uh, the tools and the techniques that I'm using really don't change. It's just that the target object has changed slightly. But all of the shrink wrapping, everything that I do is identical. Okay, so I just thought I'd leave that in there for you. We'll do just turn this guy back on. Um, might do just select this one. And let's just flatten it. So we'll go to loop tools and flatten. Oh wow, so that's gone really crazy, but I think it's because of the shrink wrap. Let's just off, off. Okay, let's just. We'll stop all of that <laughs> and get rid of that, get rid of that. Let's try that again. See if it works this time. Flatten. There we go. But we want it all, don't we? And let's try that again. Flatten. All right. We can probably actually just get rid of this. This is just being annoying now. Just delete faces like that. And let's just grab these. Slide them across. And this will go. I'm going to move it on the normals. So let's go. Uh, where are we? Normal like that. And just move it back inside. We'll come back to that. Let me finish it off, but I just wanted to put that one inside. May have to rotate a little bit, not sure. And let's just lock that. I'm going to leave it turned on. All right, so we have a few other details to put in. We've got this piece here. And I think this piece requires another level of subdivision. Have a look here. We haven't really got enough geometry there to be able to cut that in successfully. I don't think anyway. I think another level of subdivision is important for that. The same, we don't have the top view, but this is, there's another one on the top here. And there's one running down the back here. But there's also, on the other side, there's also this one here. And I think we can cut this one in now. So let's save. And what we'll do, we've got enough subdivision in here, enough geometry to probably to be able to add another loop. Or we could just grab this loop and just slide this up. Shouldn't be messing up our geometry too much. I think we'd be okay. And just come back to global there. Turn off our subdivision for a sec. And we'll come back here like this. And we'll scale on the Z. So S, Z, 0. Okay, like that. And this one's pretty good. Bring that like that. Might just scale all of these, actually. Now, actually, what I'll do, get rid of this one. Control X. Get rid of those. Let's just scale Z. I'll scale Z zero for our people who say Z. Scale Z zero. All right. And we're going to have to put two loops in. Slide that up like that. Slide that down like that. 
still looking okay. As long as that's straight. Now, is that straight? Let's do that again. Let's get rid of. Now, I know we've done this before, but I just wanted to make triply sure that this is going to be straight. So I'm going to delete these. We could have. I know we never before when we did it, we did this a second time. We're doing it a third time now, but it's just the way it goes. I'm going to bring that down. Just wanted to make sure that that's perfectly straight. Okay. Because obviously, as you're working, you know, we're subdividing, we're moving things around. You never know how things are going to shift once you apply your subdivision. So just making sure. So now we can actually, I'll probably just bring that one to there. And E again, bring that one to there. E again, down, that, okay. Right. So, save. And let's slide this across. Making sure we've got the right ones. Slide that across. And see how I'm selecting the back there? Don't want to do that. So actually, if we just look at the front here, then we know we're going to, going to select the front. And we could slide it, but I'm just going to bring it down just using the band here. Because we're going to be under, we're, we are under a shrink wrap, so we should be okay. Bring that back into there. And something like that. I'm just eyeballing this, obviously. If we follow this guide, we should be pretty good. Like that, right? Okay. Let's put another loop down here. And we need to put another loop in there to lock in the curvature a little better. Another loop in there. Pressing one just to go into vert mode. And let's just line these up. You can see how they're coming down at an angle. So we'll just click it on the X and just snap that to that vert. Just make sure you've got verts snapping turned on. And we'll just bring that one across and snap that one to that. Otherwise, we're going to lose that circular shape a little bit in there. I think that's it's okay. Now, all right, so let's roll a few loops in there like that. So that shape is locked in quite nicely now. I think that's pretty good. It's going to hold that shape pretty well. And let's start thinking about this piece at the top here. So that's this here. This is going to be a little bit tricky, but we'll work our way through it. We've already done all the hard work by establishing the shape. We've got our shrink wrap. And speaking of shrink wrap, we're probably going to have to lock in some subdivisions and lock in the shrink wrap before we move ahead with this because we don't have enough geometry in there. So we're presuming that this is all looking good now. I'm not going to have to worry about making any changes to that. This is all good. And what we'll do is we will shift D. So we're working on eight. So we'll turn off six. We'll leave seven as it is. And what we'll do is we will apply a subdivision of one. Apply. Okay. So that doubles the subdivision. And what we'll also do is we'll duplicate the shrink wrap because we're going to still need it. And we will apply one. 
So we'll apply that one. That's going to lock that shape in. So if I even if I turn this off, you can see it's locked that shape in and it's back to its normal size. A couple of these verts are a little skew. I'm just going to slide those a little bit. Not that this is that important, but I don't know, my sensibilities and all that. Maybe let's grab these ones and just slide these across. Like that. And remember, it's uh, going to be under shrink wrap again. We've already duplicated that shrink wrap. So now we've got probably enough geometry to be able to cut in this feature at the top but not too much because if we have too much geometry then it's going to make that really difficult and we can probably get rid of a little bit as well there's a probably way too much in here now so we could probably get rid of let's see every second one here we've got to be careful we want to we don't want to mess up our shape. Get rid of those. And grab those and just space those out like that. I quite like to clean up after applying subdivisions just to make sure I haven't got areas that are too dense. It's looking okay. We can leave that as it is. We might think about any other modifications to that later. So we'll do a quick save and let's take a look at this.